I would like to start uh, uh, to say that w because uh, most of you, you don't know me and I have a little bit different background than uh, many of you. My background is microbiology and I have been focused on uh, microbioecology, especially on extremophiles, so ecology and biotechnology and not so much into the astrobiology. Uh, however, we I'm participating in a, another project called MACE, stands for uh, Mars Analog for Exploration of Exploration. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I always forget what MACE stands for. <laughs> it's Mars Analog for uh, Space Exploration. Yes. And this is uh, um, uh, Charles Coquel, who is uh, he's the he's a, a, a coordinator of that project. And also, uh, we are also uh, uh, participating in uh, in the Europlanet in the transaction. So uh, today, I want to talk to, uh, talk about uh, about the real life, that the life that exists. And this life is what we have. Uh, detected in subglacial lakes in Iceland under uh, a 300 meters uh, thick ice cap. So I will have a short introduction, talk about material methods, results and conclusion. So this is the sample site. So this is Iceland. As you all know, uh, Iceland is an island. It's one of the hot, it's about one of the hot rate in, on Earth. So it's uh, really quite active. Volcanic activity is very high there. And it's very suitable for look for analog uh, place, as we can see in Mars. And, and Otter Wilhelmsson will talk about that after my talk. So just briefly, what we have here is Iceland is the only portion of the Atlantic Ridge that emerges from the surface, on the surface, and can be seen. So we have the ridge, the active zone is here from the southwest uh, up here to northeast. So this is the, the main uh, activity. So this is a map of geothermal area in Iceland, so you can see there's a lot of activity. And we will be focused on, on this area here in Vatnajökull Glacier, which is quite large, it's about 8,000 uh, square kilometers. So if you go a little bit closer, we have a picture of this. So uh, I will be talking about mainly about this uh, Skaftor Kolderons that, ha that has been formed here underneath the 300 meters uh, gla gla uh, glacier of ice. And uh, we have also another uh, area here which is not covered, only partially covered by ice. And, uh, and this area is quite very active. This is a, a, a hydrothermal activity there. There is no, uh, not eruption uh, in this area, but we have had some eruption here in Gjálp, Grímsvöð, and there is something going on here in Bárðabunga, which we don't know when that will erupt. So uh, for the last uh, maybe 20 years, we have had at, at least four eruption in this area. So here we have the three sampling sites that I will be talking about. Uh, so this is mainly uh, the, the we call it the West Kolderon, Skaftor Kolderon, or, or the, the West and, and the East zone. And these uh, Kolderons are filled up with water because of the ice melting from the activity, thermal activity, and uh, it's, it's about 100 meters uh, deep water. And uh, it, it, it periodically it burst with a flood from, so there is, a, uh, there is a mechanism that is going on there and there will be a flood from the uh, half of the, of, the, of the lake goes through here to a river uh, in, the, in the south of, of Iceland. So uh, these are the two cauldrons and we have Kverkfjöll, which we have a, a, a picture of over here. So this is a similar phenomena as here, except this is on the edge of the glacier. So it's not completely covered with, with ice. Probably this was covered some time before. 
So this is a, 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 how what you, we see a depression on the surface of the lake. So you can see that there is a there is a, a activity. So here is a picture of this, and uh, so uh, you can see there is a the cauldrons uh, are kind of a subglacial water cobbles that are formed with this geothermal activity, and of course it seals with overburdened pressure of the surrounding ice. And as I said before, it's empty as Jökulsleit. <coughs> so if you have the lake over here, uh, we have the ice. Uh, this is the, the lake and, and it's empty to about half of, of its uh, volume. So to, to enter these lakes, is you need specific equipment. Uh, here we have a special hot water drilling system, which uh, was designed specially for that. And of course, it is difficult to, to bring uh, water up there, so we use uh, melted. We have to melt the ice and, and, and use the, the hot water to drill down these 300 meters. So here is a schematic picture of, of the system. So we have a heat exchanger and, uh, and, and so on. But what the most important thing is that we have uh, also UV sterilizer, and the, this is also very hot water. So we, we are in, uh, avoiding as much contamination as possible when, when this is, when we are drilling. So this is a, a schematic picture again with, with this. So you, again, we have 300 meters thick ice over here. And we put uh, a sampling device down here that can be opened in the lake at different depth with electricity and then bring it up again. So this is a picture of, of what we have. This is uh, the, the sampling device, device. And getting some is about one liter, so it's very uh, tedious and take a long time to, to bring uh, much volume of, of, of water. Uh, so this is a, a, a temperature showing uh, a, a bit of the nature of the lake. Uh, Thorsten Thorsteson, which is also with us in this, he was here, he had to leave to, uh, today. But he had a poster, which was, I think, still up, that you can have a look at. And uh, this you can see about the, the temperature of, of the East and West Lake. And uh, it's a, a slightly different from uh, the East Lake. Uh, I don't want to go to any details, but uh, this is around 4 degrees, <coughs> and the pH is, is 5. 5.5, something like that. And again, we have these different, uh, we have this uh, West Lake and, and the East Lake. And I maybe forgot to mention that we had two, we did two boreholes in the, in the, in the East Lake. And we had uh, around six uh, liters of sample from these lakes. But in the West Lake, we only had managed to get one sample when we, when we were there. So this is uh, uh, the content of the of the of the of the of the lakes. So it's a mix <coughs> mix of glacial melt and and of course hydrothermal fluidity. And we have all these volcanic gases inside. And you can see this is the difference between uh, the West Lake and the East Lake. So it's quite similar actually. And there's a lot of silica, natrium chloride, and sulf sulf sulfur and sulfate. So what we did, we, we took take the samples and we would like to show, uh, look into the, the diversity. So we have a water sample, we have filtered the sample and we got some biomass and then do some enrichments and then isolates. We did enrichment at four degrees and also a higher temperature. We got uh, growth at higher temperature, so there are thermophiles there, but we were not able to isolate it. Any, any thermophiles, it just had a first uh, growth of, of enrichment. And then uh, we isolate the DNA and look into the, in the diversity. We also we used both, we used FIST and cloning technique in the beginning. This is about 50 to 300 clones, but with the NGS, uh, next, generation, next, next generation sequencing, we were able to do some tag sequencing on these samples. So this is uh, the results of, 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 of the two lakes. 
So we have the, the east lake, which is have two holes, A and B. And then we have the west lake. And we also have uh, a Jökulhaup, which is, was the outburst of, from, from the east, east lake. So this is represent with technique with FIS or microscopic uh, technique. Then we have this clone library. And then we have two different variable regions with uh, the next generation sequencing. So we have thousands, thousands of, of sequences. And, and what is important here is that it's very, uh, all the, both lakes or, or ev all the samples are quite homogeneous. So this is not so many taxa that was, was actually, uh, actually detected. So it's mainly four taxa, four to nine taxa, something like that. And, uh, so, yeah, so we would like to also to, to see and uh, understand what, well, because they're, they're so similar, so how, how would this, this uh, population uh, disseminate? Is, that, is, it, uh, is, is there a transfer between uh, the lakes and, uh, and for instance, Kverkfjöll? And also, can we see the same uh, sequences, OTUs that is coming from the lakes with the slope when the, 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 the subglacial lake empties to half. And uh, yes, with the clone libraries, we saw this. Uh, we have these four taxa here. This is the main taxa, Acetobacterium, Sulfurospirillum, Sulfurocurium, or Geobacter. And uh, we have an identical, so th these are distant related to, to what is known, what is, has been cultivated. Uh, not very far distant, but still distant. But we have identical OTUs in the both east and west lake. And uh, also, also for this one, and for Sulfo Kurvigum, we had identical sequences in all samples, meaning both east and west lake, uh, the open lake, which is the uh, Kverkfjöll, and also what, what was coming from the east, uh, uh, East Lake. So uh, this suggests that these lakes are colonized from a deeper subterranean <coughs> microbiome, and, uh, and, and the glacial lake, uh, bed is connected through an aquifer in the underlying permeable salt. And, and this, I think, we we can we have been showing this. But we, at least we there is no direct uh, link between, uh, between the east and, and the west lake. So these are the east and west lakes. And this is a contour map. And, and the, the bottom is we have a, at least 50 meters high ridge between the lakes. So it is not possible. It is not, they cannot disseminate uh, on the surface or underneath the, 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 uh, the, 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 the glacier. So from, from the taxonomy results, from what we got from the 16S RNA gene results, we can speculate that we have this uh, chemolithotrophic ecosystem in the, in the lakes, and uh, mainly with sulfur, uh, sulfur um, metabolism, and also surprisingly, because we have a lot of CO2 and H2, we would expect to get some methanogens, but there was no uh, archaea detected in, in these lakes. And uh, we, but we got acetobacterium, which is producing only acetate. And we also have some uh, iron reduction. But mainly it's, it's, it's the sulfate oxidation and then sulf sulfate reduction. So this is we know for a fact, uh, but we are not sure because of course, uh, this is only based on 16S RNA sequences. So we take, took some uh, metagenomes, uh, took three metagenomes from, from the East Lake. So we had from borehole B, and that is uh, a, a surface uh, a bottom sample. And then we had uh, a A3 from sample A. It was a mixture of, of these, these samples that were taken at different depth. And uh, we did some sense that, uh, and we had about 4 million reads for, 
for all these that was similar for each uh, samples. And we did some de novo assembly with spade, CLC and sample cell. We uh, made some consensus with Genius and did some functional annotation with MG Rust and uh, compared it to the Keck orthodox reference sequences and went back and did some recruitment to detect the chaos. And from that, we, we have this uh, quantitative, we could do some quantitative taxonomy from, from the metagenomes that we had and also uh, quantitative functional genomics. And uh, so these are the re results from the, from the metagenomes. So we have these uh, three samples over here, so this is uh, 16S, and this is A3, this is B1, and this is, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, there was also a, a richment with, with media that was coming from the, from, the, uh, from the lake, so as a kind of a, a control. So what we observed with both 16S, 23S, and 5S, it represents, this is the same, same bacteria or same taxa that we already uh, discovered with, with 16S, so it's not really surprising. But that uh, confirm our results. Uh, but what about we, our hypothesis about this, uh, about this uh, metabolism that we uh, detected, what well, we thought we had, uh, according to the taxon, and actually we, we can detect all the enzymes that is required for, acetobact for acetogenesis and hydrogen oxidation. So this is uh, just an overview of all of these enzymes that, that is detected. It is based on wood lung uh, cycle or uh, acetic coa reduction. So the, the, the lines uh, different between uh, the thickness. Uh, am I? It's okay. And, uh, and that's uh, okay. So, and we also, uh, for the sulfide oxidation and sulfate reduction, we also uh, detected all the enzymes that are, that are uh, taking, care at, uh, taking part in this, this metabolism. Uh, what about, we also detect a lot of nitrogen fixation uh, uh, genes, and actually we know that the members of Acetobacterium, Clostridium and Sulfospirulum mm -hmm. can fix nitrogen, and there is a lot of nitrogen which is not uh, organic nitrogen because it's coming from the, the volcanic steam which is coming from the hydrothermal vents. So this cor uh, is, is quite, uh, this uh, is fitting very well. So, in conclusion, uh, the Skafta Kartab, the both lake, they host uh, endemic, uh, endemic communities of chemolithotrophic microorganisms. Uh, there was no archaea detected, still that is surprising because there is a lot of hydrogen and CO2 and, and, and metabolism of that is more favorable than uh, acetogenesis, but there was a lot of attempt, there is no archaea, at least not cold archaea in it, uh, and we think the, the lakes are mostly likely colonized from deeper subterranean microbiome, because uh, of what we all, uh, what I have already described, and uh, we detect the uh, thermophiles that indicate there is a thermo hydrothermal activity in the lakes, which is probably not surprising, because how could the lakes be formed with, without heat? But maybe the, mo uh, the important message is that such chemolithotrophic ecosystem could inform us on the possibility scenarios for life elsewhere in the solar system, like Mars or uh, other icy planets. So, some acknowledgement. So this is uh, the group that has been working more or less in this. It has been uh, financed by NASA, uh, Conscious of Deep Life, Sloan Foundation, but most of all, what is most important is RANIS, which is the national foundation. Thank you.